I'm Sean Griffiths, and my aim here is to take you through the process of opening and editing a design through Inventor, whilst maintaining and recording these changes through Vault. This sits us within the second part of our workflow, utilising the product design and manufacturing collection. Here we can see that the plan is to take you through the shared view response process, followed by the Inventor design and simulation stage. First, we can see the shared view that Chris sent me earlier, indicating the part and potential design change. I will respond to this through my Autodesk account to highlight that I am happy to look at the design. From within this viewer, I can now choose to see any comments previously applied. I can also interrogate the model and respond within the comments section to indicate that I have received the file. First, I will measure between the faces in question and now reply to let Chris or anybody else with the associated link know that I will start looking into the design. My intention here is to use Inventor as the primary Vault client, whereby I will complete all Vault tasks within Inventor rather than using the full Vault client that is available with the software. On opening the assembly, I am not going to check out the file as I wish to leave it in a read-only state. I only wish to check it out once I start making any changes. Now that the file is open, I can interrogate the assembly to assess my design task of removing material from the spider part. This part here is the one of interest. A fair amount of eye logic has been created within this assembly, defining both itself and subsequent parts, making changes to the assembly quick, streamlined and automated. This is also integral for the setup of the configuration inside of Dynamic ETA. Therefore, I can check my model from the iLogic browser. I can change a few values here regarding the spider. Specifically, I will investigate as to what happens to the configuration when the R value increases from 3 to 4. If my design intent is to remove some material, I want to ensure there are no immediate implications to the model. Any changes to the part I'm interested in does not appear to affect the whole of the design. Therefore, I would choose a pre-configured view showing the spider at its assembly and check what is happening at this level. My intention is to make the slots on the top of the spider much larger. Therefore, I'm going to assess what is achievable. So I'll run through the arm configuration again, just to make sure there are no issues. There doesn't appear to be any configuration specific issues, but I can see there are a few parts that may be affected, such as the fixing screws and the connecting shaft and bush. Now that I have finished interrogating the model, I will return my view to normal and check out the spider and its subsequent parent assemblies. Ready for edit. The first change I will make is to the hole feature where the shafts and bushes sit. To make the selection easier, I will choose to select by feature priority. From here, I can edit the hole feature that has been defined as a seated hole with various pre-configured parameters. However, the seating value is currently set to 30, which from early inspection I should be able to reduce. Therefore, I will change this value to 22 millimeters. To check this, I will use the measure tool and here I can see the values as expected. The geometry for the slot that I wish to generate is too different from the original slot geometry. Therefore, I'm going to delete this feature. Now I can start a new sketch on a relevant face and project the geometry of any feature I wish to reuse and assist in defining my slot design. This means the model will adapt much more effectively. Setting all of this geometry to be construction lines now means that these will not be picked up as profiles when I decided to extrude the shape, making the workflow much more efficient. I will now start building the geometry for my slot design. From here, I can now constrain the sketch to ensure that it adapts according to my intent. 
adding tangency and parallel. With the sketch complete, I can now finish the sketch and extrude the profile throughout the model. With my final check, I can see that the design, from a geometrical standpoint, fits the brief. However, I now need to check that the design will suit both physically and mechanically, therefore being able to sufficiently withstand any stresses upon the updated part. For this, I will select the Stress Analysis environment. I will run the mesh's default and assess whether I wish to change it. This currently appears sufficient, however, I can always check for convergence later. I can now run the simulation and investigate the results. From here, I can see the areas of high stress ranging from blue at the bottom of the scale to red at the top, which reaches 104.4 megapascals. However, because this is a localized point, I believe it to be a singularity. Therefore, I will investigate the surrounding area, which shows a much lower stress value that is more evenly spread. By changing the range of the colour bar to reflect this, I have a much clearer view of what is happening within the model. My aim for this design is to have a safety factor above 2, which this model exceeds. However, I wish to check whether other wall thicknesses will be more appropriate for this design. To achieve this, I will copy the study and make sure that it is set to parametric. In doing so, I can add parameters from the model into the study to generate analyses based on different configurations. If I show the parameters of the part, I can find any relevant values that I may wish to assess. I am, however, looking for the offset value for the wall thickness, which I cannot find. Therefore, I will click on the modeling tab and find the appropriate sketch with the dimension I am interested in and rename it to offset. When I select a 4mm wall thickness, I can see the result value turns red and does not meet my required safety factor of 2. Therefore, I will maintain a wall thickness of 6mm.